Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to go ahead in the epidural series of lectures with dynamics of epidural solutions. That means now you give an injection in the epidural space, where all it will go, how it is acting. So that is what is about dynamics of epidural solutions. Whenever I talk anything on academics, I put a big salute to the legendary teacher of two centuries, Professor Ravi Shankar. Now who is he? He is that fellow called Philip R. Bromach. He has got a textbook and this textbook is with me for long years, decades. And I have read almost every word of it. And is now no more. What did Bromach say in 1962? A number of variables determine how far a neural blockade will spread after injection of analgesic solution into the epidural space. So, now we have given the drug into the epidural space. Now, it has to do and block. How far neural block? What are the variables? These are something intrinsic to the patient's patient age, patient's weight, patient's height. And some are extrinsic, depending upon your technique, where you are, and the drug same time. This is what Brahmach told in 1962. Now, what we have now understood is about the spread within the epidural space itself and go on to spread into subdural and subpial spreads. Spread within the epidural space. Now, we are giving 10 m into the epidural space. How does it spread? It depends upon the volume 10 ml or 20 ml or 15 ml. The speed of injection, the posture of the patient, the age of the patient, the height of the patient. These are all some of the factors which determine the spread within the epidural space. And a subdural and subpile space spread. Diffusion coefficient because it has to cross the dura. So how far is the diffusion coefficient? How far is the area of contact? What is the concentration gradient because it has to cross a membrane? How much time is it in contact with a membrane? These are all other than the epidural space spread. Now, there are, you can see three sites of action. Nerve roots, which are half covered, penetrating the pia and arachnoid and going to the space. This is one. Number two is gets absorbed by the vessels and dropping it somewhere. The vessels drops it somewhere or vessels drops it inside, something like that. First is an uncovered epidural nerve root. Second is in going into the subarachnoid space and acting here. Number three is taken up by blood vessels and dropped nearby. Why dorsal root? The dorsal nerve roots which needs the maximum, they are large. See here the dorsal nerve roots. We can see which is the dorsal nerve roots. This is the north, the which contains the ganglia. This is the dorsal nerve root. This is the ventral nerve root. The dorsal nerve roots which we need the maximum because it is sensory. This is what we are concerned with. They are large. But here you can see the separation of the dorsal root into component bundles has got a large surface area. So the local anesthetic can penetrate than a more compact ventral nerve root. Now I have a mnemonic called OPD and PLP. OPD means onset, P is potency and D is duration. Onset depends upon the pKa of the local anesthetic. Potency depends upon the lipid solubility and duration depends upon the protein binding. Yes. There are also other factors. These are important, which will be discussed later in the pharmacokinetics of local anesthetic in a separate video. Now we have got targets other than nerve roots. You can see here targets other than epidural tower. It goes into CSF or it goes into the blood. Can leak into the paravertebral area. Can go and sit in the ligament. Can go and sit into the epidural fat. Go into the vessels. 
So what we routinely tell is there are three targets. One is the nerve roots which we want. The second is the fat and third is the vessels. These are all the common targets of local anesthetic which we give. Now if you give 15 ml to the epidural space, it can go to the nerve root, it can go into the fat, it can go into the vessels. Now we can see this is the fat, this is the nerve roots and blood vessels. Drugs contained in the fat around the dural sleeves. See here, around the dural sleeves, this fat may have a greater influence than because of this. Because there is a short distance, here it will go. And this area is formed to be highly vascularized also. Vessel is also moving. So that take is more. Now this is from the internet for post academic purpose only. If you give a lumbar epidural space injection, the local duct distribution goes into longitudinal spread. T6 than T4, T3 and more. T6 going T7, T9. Local tissue distribution. It goes into affect the epidural ligaments, fats, etc. Predominantly fat and vessels and nerve roots. So in the local it is into nerve roots. Longitudinal spreads and goes there and goes into nerve roots, vessels and fat and goes to cause neural blockade. This causes systemic absorption. So in the site of injection, epidural space site of injection, this is where we are concerned with to produce a neural block. Epidural blockade in systemic surgical patients is you see lignocaine and here you can see bupivacaine. Fraction of the dose absorbed. Here lignocaine and this is bupivacaine line. Bioavailability in the CS of epidurally administered local anesthetics is low 20%. This is what Pramaj tells. Long wax this is the graph taken up from the old book. See here, when the action is very good, concentration of 2 per kind, where the analgesia is very good, the concentration may not be that good because the concentration in CSF may be high here at around 20-30 minutes, but the action may be very good in 60 minutes. The CSF concentration or less as action starts under good when action ends. So this is what Pramaj told long. The spread of an epidural solution is patient characteristics, technical factors, epidural pressures, solution. This is so many things we have seen earlier. What is the patient characteristics age? With advancing age, the epidural space becomes less leaky. Here and all, there is something here. If it becomes less leaky, if you inject here, it has to stay here or up or low and not go leak like that. Old age decreased epidural pressures, some myelin damage and easy access to nerves. These are all causing intense epidural actions in advanced age. Up to 40, they say, and some people say 25. Here you can see, above age 40, there's no further decrease. So this is what advanced age is all about. Patient characteristics, weight, height, body mass index. Does tall patients need more drugs? Does spinal space matters? Yes, many times the epidural needs are a little higher in tall patients and weight does not alter drug dose. The cephalad drug is positively correlated to the body mass index in obese pregnant women. See here, weight, BMI, obesity. Patient may be heavy 100 kilos, but epidural fat content may be normal. Patient characteristics, pregnancy, the engorged venous plexus observed in the anterior and lateral space, not much in the posterior epidural space where we give. Inward pressure and decreased to foraminal lambda, restricted distribution transverse, more longitudinal spread. This is what he told the massaging effect of distended epidural veins by Brahmaj in the 1960s. Now we know age. We know the height, we know the pregnancy, and there are a lot of other factors. Lumbar interspace, similar cranial and cardinal. Increased cranial spread after thoracic epidural injections, upper, but lower there is caudal spread. See, 
if you give an injection at T4, T5, 6 ml, 3 ml has to go up, 3 ml has to go down. But upper thoracic gland, 3.5 ml can go up, 2.5 ml can go down. But in the lower thoracic, if you give T9, T10, 3.5 will go down. This is what it tells. Whatever be the needle direction. Through an epidural needle or a catheter to which you are giving. Catheter means better drug spread, better quality of analysis. These are all some of the technical factors which influence the epidural dynamics of local anesthetics. Patient position. There are no differences in maximal cradial bread lying position or sitting position for labor analgesia. Zero to that. Other things sitting up, lying down. More in the down segments here. This is what they are told. If you lie down, here it is more. But the technically, this is not much different between the setting. Below L3 means supine position. See, if you are giving anything below L3, that means you need to go back to supine position relatively fast. That is my opinion. The succeeding supine doses will block similar to sitting. That is what he told us. The next dose, you give sitting or lateral or whatever it is, the same. Significant arteriosclerosis is expected. Go down on the dosage. Epidurography is simple, relatively inexpensive, accurate method of catheter placement. So, you can put some stain or whatever it is, dyes and see what is it going. But, does local anesthetic follow the dice? This is another question. Sitting position limited cephalad spread only in obese patients. And the decrease in spread was in proportion to the obesity. So, not much of difference between sitting and there. In regarding spreading, infusion pump, low injection pressure. So, proximal orifice will be more. Behave as a single orifice. But multi orifice catheters are always suited for better quality and spread of drug. We give a dilute bolus solution, sensory loss is there, motor is not good. We repeat the dose, but the same result. Here we give a dilute bolus, sensory loss is there, same here. But we start an infusion, sometimes motor block may be better. See, this is the Local anesthetic solution in the nerve roots. Intermittent, it may be like this. And infusions, it may be like this. So the intense blockade, possibility of motor blockade is more with infusion. Still, the chemodynamics are preserved more with infusions. Programmed high rate does not improve. Now we have speed of injections. Higher with faster injections does not correlate with the extent and regression of sensory blockade, but onset is relatively fast. 1 ml per second, onset slower with less hypotension. This is what the study tells in 2005. So what I give is around 1 ml per second, around 0.2 or 0.5 ml per second. This is what I do, but not much of hypotension. So this is very, very important. In epidural pressures, the drug will suck in because of the negative epidural pressures. So that is very important here. So even if you do slowly, it will be more than 1 ml per second. The increase in pressure in the retroperitoneal area due to pregnancy generates an inward pressure. So limiting the epidural solution leakage, there are innumerable causes to decrease your epidural drug dosings. In pregnancy. This is another cause. The restricted distribution injected epidurally facilitates longitudinal spread. So dose, volume, concentration. Administration of the same mass in larger volumes. Now you see 12 ml of 0.5 percent solution is 5 milligram per ml approximately 5 into 12 is 60 milligram. This is what is called the mass of the local anesthetic. But if you give the same 16 milligram dose in 16 ml of 0.375, 
probably the spread is more. This is what is important. The dural surface area influences the spread of epidural anesthesia with ropibacain and posterior fat volume influences the duration of epidural in healthy patients. So peak sensory level is less, but onset is faster according to the dural surface area. Onset and duration of more. The epidural venous plexus velocity may also influence. Now this is the C, this is the innermost, this is the epidural space, this is the outer dura matter, subarachnoid space here. Caudal extension, now you give CPA, continuous positive pressure breathing. So that is the difference we should know when we are giving an epidural top up in a patient who is on ventilator, is slightly different. Caudal extension by more segments, we should be careful, we should top up and see Sometimes we give an epidural and GA for a peritonitis. That patient is extubated and lying in sicko. Or that patient may be intubated and cannot be extubated, but it needs an epidural top ups. So beware. CPAP can or continuous positive pressure ventilation can alter your epidural pressures and increase your extensions. Yes, it can increase the spread of cranial or caudal. An increase in pH by adding soda bicarb to a solution, increased to non-ionized fraction. It improves the penetration, so always the onset is fast. Alkalinization may also increase the pain threshold, so that is another reason. So pK is changed, no pK of the drug, pH is changed, that is why the onset is fast. I have already told, onset, pKa, OPD, then Lipophilicity and potency, protein binding and duration. Adding local opioids to epidural may also hasten the onset, but does not affect the spread of anesthetic solutions. Addition of adrenaline, more with again, especially freshly prepared. Lignocaine is more important when you add adrenaline because it is more some sort of acetylator, but bupivacaine is not. So, See, there are already got three targets, epidural nerve roots, what we are going up, epidural fat, epidural blood vessels. Now, if you add adrenaline, one target is gone. So, actually, the blockage should be better and faster. What Brahma told in 1962, see, diffusion coefficient, area of contact, concentration gradient, time of cut. All these things, this is what he has told. Yes, yes, now we saw the fate. What he told the fate, only the epidural fat has left. Leakage, diffusion through sleeves, vascular absorption, diffusion across perineurium, subpile spread into CSF. This is what is this? Never root. All these things are there when we give an epidural injection. Longitudinal spread and then in the transverse, it can go out, it can leak, it can go subdural or it can go into the dorsal nerve roots and block it can perineurium it can go into the vessels this is what the fate as described by brahmaj what is this missing is fat spread within the epidural space depending on the volume the speed of injection the posture the age the height diffusion coefficient area of contact concentration gradient and the time of contact this remains still the almost what Broma just told. Addition of factors matters. 75-year-old atherosclerotic, yes, because we know old age. We know atherosclerosis matters. 145. One, two, three factors are there. This is what we should keep in mind. If the patient has got two or three factors which can increase the block, yes, go, go down. Go down in your dosage. Because the longitudinal spread and the quality of block may be better 20% less drugs also. A 25-year-old 160 centimeter height and 45 kg patient. Yes, we may need to give 16 ml. Same patient, we may need to give only 9 or 10 ml. This is what, because addition of factors. 75, atherosclerosis, height. Combined factors matter. 